Can you imagine being 12 and diving deep into the artificial intelligence while mastering life skills that some adults still try to wrap their heads around? The benefits are immense. Not only does Kaz's journey give him a head start in the tech realm, but also laying the foundation for critical thinking, creativity, and effective communication. And trust me, these aren't just skills for the future. They are skills for a lifetime. Welcome to the O-Tech Talks podcast, where it's all about working on technologies. You will hear the latest tech information, and your host, Kashif Manzor, brings together product overviews, how-tos, best practices, tips and tricks, and troubleshooting techniques. Hello, and welcome back to the Open Tech Talk podcast. I'm your host, Kashif Manzor. And today we have a truly unique and heartwarming episode for you. In our digital age, where tech touches almost every facet of our lives, it's not uncommon to hear parents and children bonding over gadgets and games. And that's what we usually are doing it. But today's story is a bit different. We are joined by Sam Keller who has been imparting the wonders of ChatGPT to curious minds and his prodigious 12-year-old son, Kaz, who is not just learning the ropes, but is also enhancing this experience to overcome his fears of public speaking and honing his leadership skills. And believe me, you will love it. As I'm going to learn a lot of lessons from this episode for my kids. So without further ado, Let's dive into this enriching conversation and welcome Sam Keller and his son Kaz Keller. Welcome to the Open Tech Talks TV, and today we have a special guest. And I'm, I'm going to love this episode. And I think not myself only, my kids are going to love. The so two, one is nine, and another is six. They're going to love it. And I just had a breath birthday party yesterday night and that's why for me it's morning morning for my elder son he had a nice birthday yesterday and we celebrated in the night so today i have a two guests with me sam keller an it veteran and then kaz keller who's nine, a 12 year old kid and ai genius with us who's gonna share with us how's his journey and how he's training other kids with us so let's hear from sam and kaz all right. Kaz, you want to tell the story of how, how all this arose for us? I mean, it, it basically just started when, like, I came up with the idea of me teaching people about ChatGPT right after I told my dad about this amazing new uh, tool called ChatGPT that could do a bunch of stuff, even though it wasn't up to date. It was so, like, amazing. Like, whoa, this thing is, like, crazy good. So eventually, like, a few months later, fast forward after I tell my dad, it's like, I'm like, well, wait, dad, what if I started teaching people about this? Like up to the point I'd been doing like lemonade stands, but then I'm like, this isn't really getting that much bank. Is there something else I can do that I would like doing more? And so then I just came up with the idea of teaching people about ChatGPT. Wonderful. And uh, Sam, what you do? Uh, well, I run a travel company now called Working Without Borders, but... I also do this father and son project because after we had the idea, we put a message on the software platform next door that connects neighbors and we were flooded with interest. So mm -hmm. we used ChatGPT to help us figure out how to best offer these courses. It advised us to use a site called Eventbrite. So we created a few uh, uh, events just mm -hmm. right here in our home and they sold out right away with people paying 20 US dollars per ticket. Um, okay. and we couldn't keep up with demand here. So Kaz used some of his revenues to rent the boardroom at our local community center. So fast forward to where he has taught over 23 classes, both in person, via Zoom, with people all over North America, Europe. He's made over $4,000. He has uh, taught uh, businesses, B2B clients, how to use it for content generation. He's done consultancies with tech executives. Uh, he has consulted with boards of directors like the Soroptimist International, and he's 
spoken in all these forums. And because he's gained so much confidence and credentials and income and skills, that's how, where we have teamed up to document everything about how we do this, the presentation, the script, all that. And now we've got young people and senior citizens all over the US and uh, Europe uh, following in his footsteps. Yeah. Wonderful. So Sam, uh, let's go back to Kaz. So how did you get to know about ChatGPT? Who told you first? I actually figured it out when I was watching a YouTube video on the car trip to Tahoe. Lake Tahoe. Like yep. Lake Tahoe. So I was like just watching this video about can an AI code an entire game in less than 30 okay. minutes? I'm like, wow, what AI could do this? Mm -hmm. So then the video, I heard this word called chat GPT. So I did some research and I found about out about this tool called chat GPT. And then like five minutes later, still on the trip to Lake Tahoe, I'm like, wait a minute. What if we have it write a bedtime story and it could do that? Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, well, that thing did code. So let me try that too. So okay. it generated a lot of code. And then I just kept trying new things until I'm like, this thing has so many capabilities. So fast forward like a few months, I'm back in Lake Tahoe. And then I'm like doing my first practice session after I came up with the idea of doing it. So I'm doing a practice session with like just family and it's going amazing. Wonderful, wonderful. So now after doing practicing, uh, did you thought of uh, discussing with your friends in school or teachers? What was their reaction? Ah, okay, that it is okay to use or? Well, most of them I found out later when I was included in the big like newspaper in our little town. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was, yeah, he's going to go grab an actual copy of it, but basically in the newspaper, it was just mentioning how I was just teaching people all around. And then like suddenly the next uh, Monday when I go to school, it's like everyone is like seeing about it being like how like everyone's talking about it. Like my teachers are like, great job, Kaz. Mm -hmm. And this like it was over winter break. So I'm like, I sent one of my teachers uh, an email saying, wait. Am I in the newspaper? And then, like, uh, on Monday, he's like, way to go, Kaz. It was just, it felt amazing. Some okay. of my uh, classmates were like, whoa, how are you doing that? This is, like, fashion. it shouldn't be that easy to make that much uh, money. But, mm -hmm. like, and let alone a few. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Amazing. This newspaper as well. Mm -hmm. so people kept finding out and then doing my classes. Yeah. So that's when, like eventually somewhere around that time we just like thought of the idea what if instead of just i teaching people we like uh we like essentially just hit like a choice we can right. do it. i mean like i'm just teaching or it goes to where like my dad's teaching and i'm teaching other kids how to basically do what i do so for example uh we have like this uh, kid named brady who's in a Somewhat, Sacramento. So, yeah, Sacramento, yep. I think. Mm -hmm. well, he's teaching people already and he's starting to make money. So it's just mm -hmm. like really uh, cool how like I'm not the only one making money now. It's like there's something that everyone can do to make money. Oh. Okay, amazing. I mean, sorry. Uh, right. So uh, how you are, uh, this typical question comes from every parent. So who's who's, who's going to listen to you? So how you are balancing your education with uh, with these type of activities? Well, usually, like, uh, I'll make sure, like, I do it on a date that's, like, easy, and I still have plenty of time to, like, work on schoolwork, like, homework and uh, group projects, so mm -hmm. usually, like, we do it, like, on a Sunday in okay. person, every now and then we do, like, a one-hour Zoom, mm -hmm. uh, like, uh, during the week, yeah. so. And, and what I would add to that, Kashif, is this is essentially, like, any other extracurricular activity that kids do, soccer, right. karate, and so forth. The key difference is that yeah, instead of paying money to do it, you're earning them. Yeah. Earning the money. All right, right, right. True. Like yeah. reverse money. Yeah. And Kashif, what I would really want your listeners to take away is, is this understanding of what's possible because we mm -hmm. and the other folks involved in this have now proven that mm -hmm. what is possible is is 
anyone from the age of 12 all the way through senior citizens because mm -hmm. we had senior citizens ask like, well, is this just for young people? And we thought, well, obviously 12 year olds can do it then senior citizens can do it. So just the notion that whether you're 12 or you're a senior citizen, mm -hmm. you can quickly learn enough to really help people. Most of the people mm -hmm. he taught are senior citizens and mm -hmm. they could easily be left behind right. by this AI wave. So it's now possible to make money, hone mm -hmm. your communication and your leadership skills, your right. teaching skills, your, uh, and, and, and really be of service and cool. have a lot of fun and get a lot of meaning. Uh, mm -hmm. I think pretty much wherever you are in the globe, there's a need, there's a so niche that folks could fill. Okay. So now uh, let's go but get back to some more details. So what you do when you say you provide training to, to other kids, so what actually it, it does? Oh, I, I usually just like, when I teach other kids how to do this, it just means that like, they get access to the slide deck, they get access to like, being able to contact us, they get access to- uh, The script of this. what you say for each yeah, like, slide. They get access to a whole script on what I generally say. They even get access to like a whole like range of videos. Like it's like I think it's like more than twenty videos that they get to mm -hmm. watch that mm -hmm. explain every single step of the way that they need to do to be able to like do what I do and make money while teaching. And what? And what do you do? Well, you basically, do? says mm -hmm. I'll, uh, I'll have a slide deck and I'll just okay. basically I'll just look at a slide and I'll just try and think of like in my brain three main points that I think are relevant. Mm -hmm. Sometimes okay. on the screen, and then from there, I just kind of elaborate on the points that are already shown up there. So, if it's a slide about how ChatGPT works, I'll explain how okay. like neural network that uses trillions of lines of LART, making it a large language model. How it's mm -hmm. basically using a complex uh, data center to like just. I'll, I'll be a little more simple, but basically, I'm explaining all that in a simple way to them. Okay. And I just, the slides is a not as a crutch, but instead I say as a stepping stone to help me just like say what I need to say. Okay, and they so so one part you you train them what is Chat GPT, right? And then how you train them that okay what they can get out of Chat GPT. So uh, do you do you guide them? Like I'll train them what can you get out of Chat GPT. How can you like use ChatGPT to do everyday things? And then mm -hmm. like sometimes I'll even help them out with like how can you like tune a question for ChatGPT? I don't really go in okay. depth. That's like just one of the things I mentioned. Then near the end I'll mention ChatGPT plugins, ChatGPT mm -hmm. code interpreter, ChatGPT browsing, and then so I'll just mention a few of those things as well. And then you also talk to them about its limitations and the downsides and sort of risks of it. Yeah, this, that's also what I'm going to do. So now let's talk about inside the, the caveats and also the advantages. Like, what are the main abilities of ChatGPT? Okay. Other than and, the fact that you can stuff. All right. Now, maybe uh, if you can share, because this is very important for, for kids. Uh, it could be 9, 10, 11, 12 or more go on. Uh, did you face any any fear of going in front of uh, people explaining them, or a fear of public speaking, or fear of oh what I'm gonna start? So how you overcome them, or what how you encourage yourself so that they can also encourage? The first time I did it, I had a small fear, but then I'm like, this is a hundred bucks I'm gonna make. Ah, that's <laughs> wonderful. Like. If I keep doing this, I'm gonna have a crate mm. of this. <laughs> like, what's there to be afraid of? Yeah. And then uh, actually, like, I just ask myself, like, really, what is there to be afraid of? Like, big deal if I mess up. I'm a kid; they'll understand it. It's like I don't even really think about it at this point because it's just like talking. Like, mm -hmm. kill myself. Like, I can just like say I'm sorry. Like, worst case, I can just reinforce them. Like. It's like the, I'm just like there's no, I really just think there's not a big deal if I mess up. That's probably mm -hmm. one of the things that I think really helps you overcome that fear if you just think, okay, no big deal if I mess up. That's great. So if this question we will convert into what message you will pass 
to your age follow how they need what they need to do to overcome this well usually when people who sign up already kind of have overcome it in my opinion but usually I, if any of them do have a little bit of a fear i'd say what's there to be i just kind of like tell them the same thing as i told you like just tell them think to yourself every time you do what is there to be afraid of like the only thing that's going to come out of this is a hum is money so what's there to be afraid of and then i also tell them like also really what is there to be afraid of like big deal if you mess up big deal if you stutter big deal if you forget Say you have a script you look at the slides worst case you can just use a crutch on one of those as the phones. yeah what i would add to that is that um in Kaz's experience and how we train the others is to take this incremental approach where first all you're doing is taking what you've learned and you're teaching right. say your grandma just mm -hmm. or your mom or just somebody whom you feel totally comfortable with then mm -hmm. you're going to do maybe neighbors or you, and you're going to work your way up to aid customers strangers in a right. community right it's just that incremental approach and then we also provide training on on the mindset to, to, to on how are you going to get yourself in a good healthy mindset there's a lot that goes into that but part of it is mm -hmm. keeping your focus on just trying to help just trying to right. be of service so you're not worried about so much yourself and how do right. i look how do i sound but just mm -hmm. how can i help these folks and i think sure. kaz and the others have quickly realized that a lot of the folks who come mm -hmm. a lot mostly senior citizens you quickly realize that in some ways for this technology you do know more than them and you really can help them so right you just help them yeah. right right so uh, what percentage of uh, audiences you're getting I mean the adult one or the the kids uh, most most mm -hmm. I'm getting like seniors my main okay. customer, like, usually adults have too much work going on and kids usually just uh, go to YouTube or TikTok to learn that stuff. So it's really like that's our sweet stuff because like a kid, he has more than enough time to just watch a YouTube video. An adult mm -hmm. doesn't barely has enough time, but they'll sometimes they'll come. But like our main audience is going to be a senior because the senior plenty of time on their hands and really does not want to get left behind on a wave like this because usually they'll have gotten left behind like on the iPhone or on internet oh. or some of those things. And they're just like, I'm not going to miss out on this. Yeah. And, and a key, oh. a, a key aspect of the training that he and mm -hmm. now these others provide, whether it's in person or, or via zoom is hands-on. So oh. that's part of why these folks come is that he, he's going to really show them on their devices, mm -hmm. how to get access, mm -hmm. how to start using it, how to start mm -hmm. getting mm -hmm. value from so mm -hmm. okay. it's the folks okay. that want that kind of hands-on support. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, um, uh, maybe another question. So how, how they are using it? What what benefit? Maybe you're hearing stories. Uh, if you can relate to it, that, okay, people are using it and they're sharing with you. Usually the seniors that I've taught usually end up using it to, like, write poems to their friends or, like, help them write an email to someone they know. And okay. that's what in stores like and then like i've used it to make recipes like i made these like really i made this really cool uh double mm. cake that chat gpt taught me how to make i also made this really nice cookie mm. recipe it's just like there's just some of the things that i would make with it mm -hmm. but, but i've heard your uh, customers also using it uh for um social media posts yeah. blogs like marketing copy yeah but that's more like younger people, seniors. They just, it's just like a nice way to write a poem for them. <laughs> All right. <laughs> or, or a complaint letter to an airline or something. All right. So, so okay. So now first you started in your community and then now you started the remote, like in a Zoom. Is it recorded sessions or is it Zoom live sessions? How, how are you doing it? Uh, usually my favorite to do is an in-person session because when it's mm -hmm. in person, it's just like, like you really get to just talk to them and like interact with the people there. Mm -hmm. Whereas it's like, it feels a little more distant. To me. Yeah. But, right. but the, the 23 classes he's taught have been mm -hmm. 
person and live via Zoom. Okay, okay, okay. He capped it at 12 people so that it could be kind of intimate. Everyone can get their questions mm -hmm. answered. Mm -hmm. And now, only now that it's so dialed in, are we mm -hmm. thinking about just recording it and mm -hmm. making it available as a recorded session in an evergreen fashion? Mm -hmm. All right. So apart from, from getting paid money, so what, what did you got? If you can tell us something personally in your class, in, in your, in your study, how, how is it helping you? Well, teaching about ChatGPT, like, and honestly, it's like, it's kind of like helped us like overcome my fear of like speaking. Cause in the beginning I was a little mm. like speaking to people for money. Whoa. But now I'm like, okay, big mm -hmm. deal. Well, who cares? Like it's happened before. Big mm -hmm. deal. So like that's that's really helped out. Also, it's just kind of cool just getting to like know people and they're like they just have like this people who like know me, like such a nice teachers. They just kind of mm -hmm. like understand me more, like that I actually like can grasp things. Even if like I can't pay attention sometimes. It's like okay. they still know I'm smart you know and like stuff like that but mainly the main benefit is just getting to connect with my dad and overcoming my uh fear of speaking mm -hmm. all right so sam maybe kind of come back to you as as a parent uh what what motivated you to 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 let him do this one maybe it's got his guy he, he he has got an idea but what motivated you that okay yeah that's the part i think i should like you said that's a curricular activity yeah, well, and I think your listeners who are parents will hopefully re relate to this. I was feeling that my son was, you know, a good student and good at various extracurricular activities. Right. Still, to get into top high schools or universities, it's so competitive and it's so mm -hmm. hard to really stand out or be differentiated. So I thought, this could be an avenue that could really help him in, in that mm -hmm. regard. And, and that very much has been the case. We've gotten all these signals now that he'd be a great candidate at different high schools and all this yeah, stuff. Yeah. Um, but it was, it was that desire to have the, the peace of mind as a parent that, that my kid is on a good path. Mm -hmm. Okay. If someone, I mean, other parents, you want to want to go such journeys. What is your advice to them? Um, my advice to them is that, at least in our part of the world, and in, in these other spots where these other students are now are doing this, it really mm -hmm. seems like there's a widespread opportunity now that ChatGPT and other AI tools are becoming available and becoming adopted. Mm -hmm. There's a widespread opportunity. I would say a global opportunity. Um, for young people to go beyond learning about entrepreneurship through like mm -hmm. a lemonade stand, which is a very common thing here in the U.S., to go beyond right. stuff like teaching ChatGPT is like the modern day lemonade stand. And it is now possible really within 30 days to mm -hmm. learn enough about the technology mm -hmm. to start helping people. And whether it's initially for, for donations, so some of the students right. have started just, they just get donations or whether you're actually selling tickets, there's a, a fantastic entre entrepreneurial opportunity in many different places and it's it's feasible to, to pursue. And then I would think that, that if, particularly if it's young people doing it, the local media and stuff is gonna regard them as a prodigy, that, that's kind of the label that's gonna be put on it. Oh, they must be a prodigy. And, there's just a lot of benefits that come from from doing this the skills the confidence the income and then mm -hmm. you know whether it gets you a scholarship or gets you admitted right. to some university it's it's right. a right and what do you think Cass? what what kids can get it out of it i think honestly uh kids can just get a lot out of this like if people take this course and actually start making money it's just a really powerful way to boost your confidence. And it like, if you do it a lot, like I have, it's definitely going to like increase your, it'll make you like more known around your community. And it might even increase your odds of getting into a good college or getting mm -hmm. to a good high school. Because it's like, just when you do this, you're helping out your community. And it's just a really fun and nice thing to do.
Mm -hmm. All right. I would just quickly add to that that um, uh, it's uh, it, it it basically enables young folks to to have the confidence that hey, if if they want to get a certain kind of job, you know, right. especially with tech or artificial intelligence or teaching mm -hmm. or whatever, they're going to be able to do so. Which which right. is meaningful as as the job markets get disrupted, but but also this this confidence that hey, I could create jobs. Mm, true, true, and that's that's so wonderful. The more way of thinking, anyone even actually your name, right? Yes. So Kaz, uh, maybe in a conclu concluding remark, what do you think? What you want to leave uh, a last? I mean, message to kids who are listening to you to this one. What or appearance even maybe what they should be doing it or how they supporting how they should support their their kids if their parents. Uh, I would like to just say that like what I'm doing is just like really meaningful to me and like the project program is just like an excellent way I think to just like learn how to just if you're a parent like just learn how to get your kid learn you and your kid how to like teach people about this new up and coming AI while making money out of it and for kids it's just like a fun way to make money especially if you're young because it's just like changes the way you think about money so sure. instead of just getting an allowance like that was easy i washed the dishes i made uh, ten dollars now it's like <laughs> i spent an hour right. teaching people about ai same amount of time it would have taken me to like clean dishes three times sure. and i made like, wait, wait wait let me think 20 times the a... amount of... well, yeah that's true that's true all right so maybe uh okay. yeah yeah so we we if audience want to reach you out. So if you want to share some some links of your website or your social media channels or how how, how someone want to, to reach out to you. Uh, if someone would like to just go to our site, sign up for one of our classes or sign up for the mm -hmm. project program, they can go to Gen AI mm -hmm. Academy dot AI, no hyphens, no spaces okay. dot AI. And then, uh, yeah, just feel free to go there. And then I would also say that um, for for the, for folks who are wanting to just sort of stay abreast of these evolving AI tools, mm -hmm. tech mm -hmm. products, and to get a glimpse in terms of what the, this younger generation thinks about them, Kaz has a, a YouTube channel. Yeah, it's um, YouTube.com at the slash at uh kaz explains tech no hyphens just kaz explains tech mm -hmm. and that's where i just post videos about new up and coming technologies and also how i'm using them and how you guys can use them to do stuff with it yeah wonderful great kaz explains tech excellent thank you so much and lovely to to have you as a guest and i'm really you you inspired me to 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 let my kid he's a nine year so he's gonna get into it slowly. Thank you so much for joining the show. Thank you. Thank you for having us on, Kashif. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the O Tech Talks podcast and be part of Tech Talks at otechtalks.tv. It's a turf to share ideas, insights, and innovations.